Welcome to the Codeplay Culture Podcast, where we discuss tech, gaming, health, and the world around us. Back for another exciting episode, week over week. Uh, Rui and Logan back here, Code Play Podcast. Uh, sorry, Code Play Culture Podcast. I'm sure episode <laughs> number three that'll get it's a little enough. bit more. It's close enough, you know, like a stone's throw um, is the analogy. But uh, yeah, so today's episode pretty exciting. This topic was uh, Rui's idea, and like we, it, for those that don't know him, and I go a little bit back and forth on the topics week over week, and um, <clears throat> you know, kind of decide. Um, and kind of do our prep before then. So today's interesting topic in code play culture is really the play part of it, where we go over the, you know, the different influential directors, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto, uh, Kojima, Sid Meier, like all of these different people that shaped the industry. And without them, you know, we might all still be playing Candy Crush on our phones and not know about video games as a anything other than a casino kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so that's going to um, hurt some people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, that That's fine. It, I remember, um, I was at, um, uh, a long time ago at one of my first jobs and, um, it's like, like I was there for like six years and they all knew that I was like a gamer and all that stuff. And I remember this one, uh, girl came up to me and she, she said, Oh my God, Logan, I'm, I'm finally a gamer. And, and I was like, really? That's awesome. Like, what are you into? She's like, Candy Crush. And I was like, oh, okay. That's, that's, yeah, that, uh, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, video games took like that little dip. You know, everything ebbs and flows. Like, yeah. um, once, you know, the phone, phone games came in and they went to that freemium or that you keep on putting in tokens of like, mm. oh, if you want to add some features to your character or your, um, you know, your mech or your robot or whatever, you just got to keep on pumping in that, you know, five right. bucks to get these coins. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, and it's quite genius, right? Because, yeah, you mentioned five bucks, but some of them are like 59 cents. And you think to yourself, like, what's 59 cents? Right? Can't yeah. buy anything for 59 cents. It's, yeah. it's quick. It's small amount, but um, $200 later, you're, you're up shit's creek. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, at the same company, uh, there was a lady who, um, you know, often, you know, parents, they'd let their kids play whatever game. And, you know, some people that are not that tech savvy probably wouldn't have things locked down like payments, which is like that whole epidemic. So this, uh, friends, uh, kiddo and probably like, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 ran up a $1,200 Apple bill. Um, and it was like an interesting conversation right then. I was like, okay, so what did you do? She went back and forth with Apple until, you know, they were able to, I guess she was quick enough and, you know, they realized, okay, it was just, you know, and they returned the money. So, uh, that was, kid uh, got to keep his beefed up character. Is that That's a good question. I never oh, asked okay. that. Does it like dock it from the game? But my, I, I would assume that it probably wouldn't, you know, I, I who would eat the cost and the liability? Right. It'd probably be Apple, you know, they're yeah. probably making hand money hand over fist so they can take on that liability and that risk to reimburse people once in a while. It's like the whole thing with Amazon. Um, you know, one of the reasons why people love ordering from Amazon, and this is a tangent on a side note down a rabbit hole of a segue, <laughs> but, um, you know, you would probably, or we would all probably love to shop at a place where we wouldn't have to worry about returns. Right. Right. Um, if we could be assured that we do have you know, 30 days or maybe even longer. And, you know, we don't have to worry about them saying no. And then there's some, you know, teenager that's like trying to get assistant manager at the retail store or whatever it is. And she's like, no, you can't return this because that's how I'm feeling today or whatever it yeah. is. Right. And you're like, oh man, I got to go home and tell my wife and she's going to, you know, tell me how much I suck. Right. And, um, and, and with Amazon is like, you can literally not only return open games, you know, yeah. or open CDs, you know, you can slice the CD, play it like, or a game and play it and return it. But you can return things like, and I've never done this, but I just, you know, I know what you can do, you know, from people I've talked to, you can, you can try on underwear, you can return yeah. them. And I mean the, so basically they're like, I wonder if it's they good. Burn them. Yeah. Well, I found out what they they're do. They're not going to resell them. Are they? No, no, no. Um, some things like, I, I know in the U S they were, they had a, 
I don't know if it's direct through Amazon, but it looks like it's an Amazon mini company that yeah. will, it's like secondhand by Amazon. It's like in the US that you can buy the returns. But in Canada, they just drop ship them to like Habitat for Humanity and all these other charities and they just take the tax right off. Right. Um, so yeah, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, Rui uh, trying on underwear and then you get them and you're like, why are these so... Uh, you know, stretched out. Why they're so loose? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are they so loose? They're supposed to be a, and it's like, well, the, you know, they're a return. And, and it's always like shifty, like open it. You're like, oh, fuck, this thing's been a return, turned, right? Like, yeah. It kind of looks like it's been mangled a bit, like almost That's like terrible. a bunch of squirrels. Um, Costco's good for that too, right? Costco Baker does that too. Croissants, like, there's mold on it. You take it back. <laughs> like I, croissant. I had a Costco hot dog today. Yeah. Um, and then it's I, huge, I, right? Yeah, they're they're like obnoxiously huge in a good way, you know, like almost like way. buy me a drink first <laughs> level <laughs> of uh, like enjoyability. Um, my uh, wife brought me uh, a Costco hot dog today, and uh, mm-hmm. unfortunately, it was cold. But you know what? Uh, that's first world problems. Beggars can't be choosers, and uh, right. you know, I thank my wife every day for bringing me Costco hot dogs. <laughs> nice. You but, know so uh, much you love your hot dogs, man. Yeah, but then when I squirted, um, I got to put a long blank pause in there. When I squirted uh, the uh, mustard and ketchup, I got both the mustard and ketchup water. And oh, uh, worst part, it, you know, she's like, "Oh, you didn't uh, shake it," and I was like, "You don't think I shook? I shook the, <laughs> I shook the hell out of that thing." It's like I just got, I got water city there, and yeah, and, uh, yeah. So so far so good. I got my protein, got my carbs. We're ready to rock it. Um, so um. Game directors, like, you know, like without like going through our list of prepared um, people, like just hypothetically straight off the dome, what, yeah. who do you think is your personally uh, most influential game director or kind of like creative mind behind mm. a set of games, a single game? Um, yeah. And well, for well, what reason? Well, I do have a single, single director that I think is by far the best in my opinion, because I just love his games. They, oh man, I spent hundreds of hours on these games. They're just amazing. And his name is, what is his name? Yu Suzuki. So he's the guy who made Shenmue. And I don't know oh, Shenmue. yes. It, at the yep. time when they came out on Dreamcast, it was a revolutionary game. And it was just, it was just the best of the best. You can literally, it was one of those games where it may have been the first of its kind, where you can go in every single house and interact every single person although they don't do much but this is before skyrim and or or um morrowind right Mm -hmm. go into every house talk to each npc or each person and the whole setting was just made you feel like you were in tokyo and Mm. it was just the greatest Mm. i love it still one of my favorites i of course bought part two and i play these all on dreamcast and uh, Mm. I just played the crap out of them. I just finished them and, and I'll play them again. I bought part three, which was um, somewhat of a disappointment. But then again, it's just maybe because it lost its magic. Yeah. Right? Because that first time, it's like, you know, the first, right? You never forget your first. Yeah. Right? What do you think? What's your what's your absolute favorite or one that kind of... Probably... um like Sakaguchi, Hironobu Sakaguchi, he's the, um, for those that don't know, the creator of, uh, I would say creator of every one of the Final Fantasy games before they started sucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like in in my opinion, I, like I, I kind of got, not got out of them, but they just completely went almost Hollywood after he left. And yeah. he, um, he left and he made uh, two or three or four games. One of them was mobile. One of them is coming soon. And the other two is, uh, one of them was, they were both for Xbox 360. Um, one was Blue Dragon with the art style of that kind of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Quest, you know, whoever that creator is. Yeah. Um, um, and the other one is, uh, it is, I forget the name of it, um, but if I just, I'll look it up real quick. It's um, um, Hironobu Sakaguchi 360 game. Of course, like my favorite game of all time, I'm drawing a blank on it. And it's not even charades. Um, That was my pun. Where is... So Mistwalker is what he started once he Mm -hmm. left there. And it was um, Lost Odyssey. And that was incredible. Like, I remember getting, like, 
like not overly dramatic, but like actually baseline level normalness of just getting so hyped and excited when I started playing that. Um, nice. It was, was at 360, a, right? Yeah, it was 360. So like when he left, you know, Sony or PlayStation had that contract with Square Enix and, um, you know, it seems to happen a lot where like these people are being like absorbed for their soul, like yeah. Kojima. And then they're like, enough is enough. I'm going to go start and do my own thing. Um, I don't think that Sakaguchi story is, is going as, as well as let's say Kojima's is right now. Right. Like, you, you know, but you know, I, I hope that I see a little, you know, more of that stuff come back, but I, I went on this buying video game binge, right? Mm -hmm. And this is probably like two years before, three years before uh, Lost Odyssey came out. And I had like 30 games or something. And I said to myself, you know what? Enough is enough. I need to just sit down, you know, after school or work and just play the heck out of them, get them out of my queue, um, absorb the cost, enjoy the fun. And I, I probably got to like 21 completed. So I had like nine left. Right. Yeah. Um, and then I hadn't bought a game since so we're talking about like many years went by without buying games because I, and I was like pretty, uh, meticulous about not breaking this habit, this newfound habit <laughs> from overspending. And then we rented from blockbuster, the lost odyssey. And I remember, cause I hadn't been playing new games, right? Like for mm -hmm. two years, it was like being starved or deprived of like your favorite media. Yeah. And I remember this one, it's a cut scene at the beginning of lost odyssey. And the guy does some kind of um, stab into a big robot's like eye and then does a backflip. And it was, it had this like orchestral classical music backflips lands almost like a look on his face. Like he doesn't even, he's not even excited. He's kind of bored. He wants to go home. Typical anime, like, like where they look back at the camera, they're like, Hmm. And it was like, it didn't affect them. And then just things explode behind you. Yeah. Um, and then I thought it was a cut scene. And then the menus came up and it says, you know, attack magic next. Like you're the, you couldn't tell the cutscene transitioned into the gameplay. Right. It was, it just made, you know, the hair on the back of my neck stand. I was like, whole, like it hit me so hard. We're talking about two years of not playing any new games and that being my, you know, my dominant kind of, um, media format yeah. and then this thing just shook me to my core the f my favorite uh director of all time of all of this stuff uh, some of those 30 games were many final fantasies like obscure ones that i hadn't played um yeah and uh yeah just incredible um have you ever played lost odyssey i have not no i've seen it but i've never played the game man. so is good it, is it worth a, a replay or Oh, for sure. Now, Especially because on 360, they did up res it to uh, the 4K. Um, and like, so they picked like a handful of ones to do, like Skate 3 and all of that. Yeah. And those that got the, the love treatment of the 4K 60 FPS upgrade, yeah. literally like a patch that like the back compat team was able to do, I believe, or the develop with, you know, in tandem or collaboration with the original game developers. Yeah. And it's a joy to play. I could be wrong about the, the 4k upgrade on that one, but I do remember recently replaying it on Xbox series, uh, uh sorry, Xbox one. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was just incredible. Nice. So like the two main characters are, um, you know, husband and wife and they're immortals, right? Mm -hmm. So they have literally raised kids, watched them die. Their grandkids uh, have like got old and died. Yeah. Um, at a certain point, like immortals, like as a topic is like, you'd get probably like, you know, okay, that's enough. I'm tired of seeing everyone I love die. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you stay the same age. Yeah. Grandpa is 20 <laughs> and he looks fabulous. He must be shredded. Um, <laughs> that sounds weird. Yeah. Have you have you played um have you played Shenmue? They did a release on PS4. No, and uh I, I would love to. And that was uh like a HD, obviously like 4K. Was yeah. So nice. that, I, I believe that bundle contained all three all three games in one, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, man. You should it's definitely it's it's a masterpiece, man. Um yeah, so that one I know that um Shen Shenmue, like that's like one of those ones that people talk about 
It was the first one on Dreamcast. It was called Shenmue, Shenmue Part One. So, and and a lot of people have like this when they talk about Dreamcast. Like, I never had one, but a lot of yeah. people were like, just I get the feeling of like when I watch things like uh, Electronic Playground with Victor Lucas and Tommy yeah. Tellerico, and like all of the different um, you know people that talk on YouTube and magazines and all this stuff. They really loved Dreamcast, and oh, everyone man, was, was sad. Amazing. They were sad that for some reason it dissolved or whatever the reason is like it was yeah. like one of those consoles that if it continued it could have dominated right of course man it was so good it was so ahead of its time right it had yeah. the broadband connectivity and online play i don't think anything had that aside from a pc right it's ahead of its time man they had crazy what? like control oh the controllers had little memory cards yeah uh MCUs and the screens, or something right? yeah they had screens yeah you could take oh. it to go yeah play with those little tamagotchi things and oh my gosh you know, it's like little tiger was- handhelds right <laughs> Yeah, it was, that was cool. Like, you pop it back in and then you know, transfer the character. It was pretty, pretty that's nice. So cool. Um, so yeah, like that was one I wish I played. Uh, maybe it's a good opportunity. You said PS4, so probably hit that on P. Hit that. <laughs> Yo, can I hit that? Can I hit that on PS4? Yeah, man. You want to hit it on PS5? No, man. I, I I put PS4 games in PS4 because I want yeah. that OG feeling, right, dude? Yeah. I um. I'm not sure if you've seen that video I, I did on, um, you know, why I don't play PlayStation four games in five, mm-hmm. um, unless they've been patched for performance reasons Yeah, is that they are doing like a emulation level of, you know, back compat and there is some quality degradation loss, but, uh, if it's on four, I'd play it on four. Yeah. Yeah. It's we on play four, it man. You'll, you'll love it. Absolutely. I like it's, I like that. Yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry, go ahead. I like that the the uh, the one of the guys that didn't make the list <laughs> is the Beth- <laughs> Bethesda guy. But I just watched Who's this whole Bethesda video. guy. It or maybe we can just leave it at that. Like maybe we won't mention his <laughs> name, and actually that'll create more uh, dramativity or pos- positive drama than it yeah. would of than not. But you know, if there's a lot of re- retrospectives on him of you know un unkept promises you know undelivered like basically you know morrowind and i see all of that stuff where like it was all good right yeah. and then it just went down right like right. fallout 67 all of this stuff but um yeah essentially there's you know a bunch of retrospectives online um and uh pretty brutal grim end to all of that mm-hmm. stuff but um bethesda is no longer looked at as like due to due to him you know, primarily, yeah. um, and the engine, but, uh, they do have a new game coming out, which is I think Starfield, right. Mm-hmm. Which does look pretty good. But at the end of the day, we've heard this story before with Bethesda and like the, you know, I haven't played a game of theirs since uh, oblivion, Yeah, you know, but a I lot played, of people um, like Skyrim. Skyrim was, Skyrim was really good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, I finished it. It was pretty easy. But uh, I mean, there are a ton of side quests I missed. Yeah. Fun game, though. So, um, yeah, I didn't know about that director, the Yu Shizuki. Yeah, Yu Suzuki, man. He's yeah. virtual he made some fighter. Other games. Yeah, virtual fighter. Right. Um, yeah, what else? All of that stuff. And that's like, so he worked at Sega then, right? Like primarily then? Yes. Because yeah. Shen Moon was on Dreamcast. It was on Dreamcast and uh, it was on Xbox. Ah, yes. Original Xbox. Um, Whatever they can do to take down Sony. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe the company was AM2. It was a division of oh. game publisher. That's part of Sega, I believe. I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but AM2 was the sub uh, subsidiary, mm. likely. Um, have you ever played the the um, Yakuza series? No. And uh, that's another one by him? No. It's by somebody okay. else. And I have no idea who, it, who it's by, but... That's another it's one that I haven't played. You've played it? I've played it, yeah. So, like, have you played, obviously, GTA? Like, any flavor, three? I up? have, yeah. So, what, how would you, like, pick one? Which one would you prefer to play and why? I prefer to play GTA. It's a lot more wow. uh, open world. And I don't think you can't get into cars in, in Yakuza. It's more story-based. Right. And the, the fights are kind of... Um, I'm not mistaken. They're turn-based or kind of scripted, mm. yeah. as opposed to just you know 
shooting somebody or mowing yep. them down with a ice cream truck, right? Yep. So you can't do all that fun stuff in Yakuza, unfortunately. But story wise, yeah, story wise, it's way better than than GTA, I, I think. Yeah. So yeah, for a story, you want Yakuza for like overall game, probably GTA. Yeah, when I'm drunk, GTA is way better. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, man, uh, I do like games that have like <laughs> you can drive <laughs> and get away with it. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, I just uh, and then no, someone calls you. Stop you. You're like, oh, I just uh, ran over a couple of people. I've I, I think I've had way too many drinks. They're like, I'm calling the cops. You're like, no, no, no I, I ran them over in a video game, right? <laughs> um, Even the cops can't stop you in the game, man. You put in the cheat, get your five yeah. stars, and they're like blowing the whole city up <laughs> yeah. for some reason. You're <laughs> it's funny what the cops it's will, fun, man. In, in GTA, what the cops will do. To like the, the the civilians that will die oh, <laughs> for, for them they, trying to get you. kill themselves trying to get you. <laughs> I've seen them like jump off bridges and oh, drown man. themselves. So um, another good one, uh, uh, Miyamoto or Miyamoto San, as uh, I guess that's a, you know how you uh, refer to any anyone is like Mister Mister Miyamoto Miyamoto San, uh, mm. Shigeru Miyamoto, um, famously known for the father of Nintendo. Um, all things Nintendo, Nintendo would probably yes. not be existing today without the the soul of this, the most pure, probably the most pure kind soul that has ever gotten into the video game industry and made like mm-hmm. a tremendous name for themselves. Like looking at the rest of the list, like I would say, you know, who would you want to, um, you know, who would you say is probably the most kind, humble, pure spirited, happy go lucky. And, and I would. You know, I would definitely say him. Um, I would too. I'd have to agree with you. You know, he uh, rides his, well, I, I think he, like last time I checked, like, you know, heard an update, but he doesn't drive to work like past like 34, uh, sorry, 20, 30 years, whatever. He just rides yeah. his bike to work. Nice. And he just probably has that Miyamoto smile the whole way. He's going to live like 150. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what they say. <laughs> like you want to die early, just sit at your desk and work. Exactly what we and, do all the time. Yep, that's why I got a treadmill underneath my desk. And nice. I would be walking right now, but that would be obnoxious for the microphone. <laughs> yeah, so no, he's definitely a um he's he's uh he took that company to to the next level, right? He made Nintendo what it is today. Um yeah, yeah, it's just great, man. Great ideas and such a, a good humble person. And have you seen that that Mario theme park that he keeps on showing off? Yeah. Um, maybe, I'm maybe not he's sure. Not what, so humble. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know him personally. I'm just yeah, fair, fair I'm enough. Just regurgitating. But people yeah. say, <laughs> such a humble. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. For all I know, he's uh, sacrifices Yoshi's in the spare time. What do I know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine? He, he's just like he's like everyone thinks everything's good. And then <laughs> Yoshi's just like no, <laughs> no, please. And he got him hooked down to a table like James Bond yeah. villain. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me where the egg is, Mister Yoshi. <laughs> where are you hiding that egg? And then, and then Yoshi's just like let him because he like <laughs> he licks. I just um, uh, returned or I traded into GameStop um, Yoshi's Crafted World. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one I I bought and got all the plush, um, you know, amiibos. Yeah, right? what was that for and, Switch? Yeah, it was originally yeah, it's for Switch. Um, and yeah, I forget the Amiibo still work on switch. They were like a, a Wii U thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for switch and then I sold it. I was like, I'm not playing this game. And then I did one of those pretty much a waste of money where you're like, okay, you know, it's been like six months. I'm going to rebuy it. I'm going to really, you know, buckle, <laughs> I'm going to tighten that, that buckle and I'm going to just get her done. Yeah. And nope, it sat on the shelf for another six months. So I returned it and, uh, put it towards something my uh, son wanted to buy, which was, Animal Crossing for Switch because he nice. likes to play that together with the sister. So I figure if they're playing together instead of beating each other up, that's right. probably a step in the right direction in terms for of sure. parenting. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> they're made of yarn, <laughs> but I don't know. Just gameplay was. Uh, but yeah, and then the Mario movie, right? Oh like yeah, coming out Jack in April. Black, yeah, Chris Pratt. It's gonna be All fun. The- I can't wait. I mean, I'm taking my, my young son for the first time to a theater, so wow, he's going to love it. He's crazy about Mario. Nice. Have you ever seen the voice actor that 
the guy that does the voice for Mario. No. It's kind of like an old guy. You know, you'd probably expect him to sound like Mario. Yeah. It doesn't look like him, but man, it's it's kind of cool. Um, does he have an accent? I don't recall. I think a slight one. He almost looks yeah. like he's, I don't know, of, of Europe, European descent. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, and um, so many different Mario games have come out over the years. Like my my personal favorite, just because of the Sakaguchi um, love affair, was Super Mario RPG. I'm not sure yeah. if you've ever played that on SNES. I have. Um, There's like one character in there that was like a cloud. And it's just mm-hmm. like, it's just so good. And it spawned these other similar games to RPG, which is like Paper Mario. I loved yeah. Paper Mario. I love that one too. Oh, just the fact that you can turn yourself into an airplane and throw yourself just mm-hmm. seems like, very fun game. What about yeah. uh, Luigi's Mansion? Do you remember that? Yes. And uh, oh, uh, not the, you're talking the about cube. the Ghostbusters, right? Yeah, it was a Ghostbusters yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. They recently like, released a Switch one too. Yeah. Um, that was. Um, I haven't tried it, but I did love the original. Mm. Really, really good. But yeah, man, going back to the older Mario's. That Paper Mario was uh, really fun. What about uh, Tactics? Wait, was there a Mario Tactics? Was that Ogre Tactics? Yeah, there was a Mario Tactics, but I think. But there was also uh, Mario versus Rabbids, which is that ah, okay. whole. Um, I wanted to say EA, but it's not that. Who's the Montreal studio that does, you know, they did some, they did Assassin's Creed to Ubisoft, right? It's yeah. a collab between ubisoft and nintendo and it's mm-hmm. all tactics based stuff and it looks like a lot of fun they got like yeah. i think two or three mario versus rabbits and if you want that rpg level thing uh but on a on a grid like chess yeah. um but i did play like um final fantasy tactics tactics advance like I, I can't i even had this little tiny nintendo thing that was like super small like the size of like half of a mars bar yeah. And I would just put it right up to my eyeball because it would only be able to, <laughs> only one of the balls would be able to see it. I'm yeah. like, okay. And then it would just burn my retinas, but I, I had a blast in my bed, ignoring my homework. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and yeah, then, yeah, there like, was no paper. There was no tactics. Mario was tactics. Ogre, uh, ogre tactics. Ogre also. tactics. Yeah. I was uh, mixing up my, my games. Yeah. Like, that's what happens, man. Yeah. You, know, you get old and you're like, I remember a game. It was a Mario tactic, you know, and, and, and then and then your kids are like, "It's final Mario fantasy." This is <laughs> you're like, "You suck, Dad!" You like just wiki it, you know, like you know you're talking. I believe wiki's wrong. Let me submit a complaint. <laughs> oh, they're running out of money. Oh, let me just pay the man. Um, yeah. So John Carmack, also uh, very influential uh, co-founder, mm-hmm. um, or like he's well known as like the person that is id software or id software right. i think people refer to it as, as id, ID. but um, yeah. if you think about it like as a computer like a software engineer dude put id as his company yeah. name but and then got the world to call it id <laughs> that's, that's pretty genius man right can you imagine naming your corp guid and people yeah. calling it guid right like no I'm people just, just call to it show GUID. you man you have a great product doesn't matter what the name is man yeah you can name it kakapupu and yeah it's a great company and uh it'll be caca P-O-P-O, yeah. P-O or whatever however you spell yeah. it <laughs> something like that it's yeah like, man, it's software it so i guess his company was not doomed but it did right. make a huge quake through the mm-hmm. industry and Absolutely. those are the two games those are the bad dad jokes for your yeah. um for your people listening and putting up with that um it's an intended pun right there yeah it's a big pun like you like my rapper joke it's not about like candy bar packaging <laughs> look at that that was just brutal was um it's like take you out back like old yeller um it's like that was pretty sad actually by the way like i think that's the only part of the movie i saw um but doom i remember um was he in charge of what did he do unreal because like was quake like at what point did like Cliffy B and John mm. Carmack like split and become their own people like physically? 
I have no idea, man. I I, I thought Quake had, and Unreal had the separate distinct engines. Mm. They? Yeah, I, or could maybe be right. it's the same. There could be some crossover there because they were around the time, and then and then obviously Unreal, Unreal became Unreal. Yeah, right. Because Unreal then, was amazing, man. Yeah, I just remember like double kill. Yeah. Dude, everything like, was so good stuff. back then. Yeah. It was, like it was the first dropping. time, right? Things are happening. Like it's the first time you see that kind of stuff. So it was pretty amazing. Now yeah. it's like everybody has the same template and yeah. uh, nothing's unique anymore. So that's probably yeah. why everything's less fun. Yeah. It's almost like you got to make a game that's called uh, Black Dot White Square. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just like because like everything's already been done. And then you go into the game, it's just got a white square. And then in the middle, there's a black dot. And then you tap it and the credits come up. Good yeah. job. That's it. They're That's like, it, why man. did I, why did I download this? <laughs> like one star review. And then we're like, well, I was trying to do something that doesn't exist. There you go. But you know what, what they need, I can tell you, man, good formulas, remove budgetary constraints, mm. give more creative freedom and let people do what they want. Mm. Uh, remove sprints remove timelines and remove milestones and you'll have Ah, something great incredible (laughs) just just basically allow the people to frolic in a like a primordial soup of creativity yes yes how would that work financially like you'd have to have some kind of burn rate yeah (laughs) nobody cares like like, the the id guys at id didn't care they just like worked through the night and did what they yeah or id i should say id guys at id didn't care Work through the night, do it, you know, make it, push it out. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, don't worry. Everything will be okay. <laughs> you know, the best thing about coding, um, I would say, or creating, I, I shouldn't say coding, I would just say creating, because it could mm-hmm. be like art, it could be creating your mom a birthday card, could be anything yeah. that you're making as a creator. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've made it, um, and you love to do it and you're proud of it after, and you worked so hard at it and you just love doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, eight hours pass and you're like, oh, I needed to get paid or I can't, or I, or they're going to take my house. Or I can't get groceries. Yeah. Like there is so much unlocked human potential that is just being like, um, it, or inhibited by capitalism. Right. right. It's being like, it's being restrained, right? Yeah. I have a feeling that if um, we knew what we knew, like maybe 500 years looking back, uh, we would realize, man, humanity was holding itself back from like universally uh, evolving. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's possible. Look, games like, uh, like Doom or like the first Sims or, or a first Shenmue, right? You have these kind of creative endeavors that blossomed, but then you have, you know, your, your typical capitalist ventures, which is 20 parts of uh, Assassin's Creed, which all suck except the first one. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Assassin's Creed is good. Now let's just make it a bunch of weird spinoffs and we'll take our money and just destroy it. That's Thanks, it. guys. <laughs> oh. I mean, even, even, the, even the sequel was pretty bad. I yeah. couldn't play it. Oh, but, uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah. Is, wasn't the first me, one one the was one, one was good yeah right had a cool premise it did um like like kojima right with the whole um what is it called where, where is that name Co- no what was the name of the studio that he left uh capcom Cap- is it was, no damn i can't believe i'm drawing a blank wait a minute konami konami right so let's, let's yeah. check it out and then um you know all of the Metal Gear stuff and all the stuff he did before, incredible. And then, you know, I think he left um, throughout when when five was halfway done or whatever. And he, he just did the uh, Death Stranding stuff and he's working on mm. other stuff. But <clears throat> that was another example of corporate getting in the way of creativity. Right. right. You know, the, it's, it's, it's interesting to think is when that happens, when... What happened with Sakaguchi, what happened Mm -hmm. with uh, Kojima is basically like you're watching this Pokemon evolve far past the capabilities of whoever was in charge of um, Square Enix or whoever was in charge of um, 
uh, Konami, right? Yeah. They ba- basically just said, you know what? What I have to offer the world is much better than what you have. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing I love seeing that story where um, because probably um, Sakaguchi, not probably for sure, Sakaguchi and uh, Kojima made their parent companies filthy rich, and they probably right. didn't get very much of that. They probably got some, right? No doubt mm-hmm. they're they were rolling in it, but not as much as that that big fat cat at the top just smoking that cigar yeah. and going, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just taking it all. Um, and I love the story of them evolving to be be much more than Konami or Square Enix could have ever been, you know, right? You know, when they yielded or when they were used by the the company. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I can cer- certainly understand the company's point of view, right? They're they're putting up a lot of the risk. Yeah, they don't want to lose, right? It's a financial risk to the company. Yeah, and they don't want it to flop because. Yeah. Obviously, they can't pay the shareholders, right? So, yeah, I can understand that that part. But yeah. you know, what are you going to do, right? That's 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 their problem. It's not really For my sure. problem. Yeah. So I do want a creative game. I do want something new and yep. exciting. Yes. Right. Which has not come out in many many years. Yeah, it's it's been few overdue. And far between we are definitely overdue. Um, mm-hmm. Did you play Death Stranding though? No, you no, know what? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get the PS5. Like we have, like our. I think next Friday, um, and we're gonna watch a little bit of that. Um, um, the a couple of those like um, movies that we talked about. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it obscurely, and I need your help here to to remember the uh, the director of uh, uh, Miyazaki. Yeah, Miyazaki. Right. Yeah. So for those that <laughs> don't know, like those are the movies we're watching. Okay, like right. The Ghibli. That's not, Chibli Studio happen. movies. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> and then I'll exactly like, the the, glad the drawing. Of, that. Yeah, the drawing the blank thing is is uh, bearing the lead and, and causing some ideas mm-hmm. here. Um, I'm going to get the PS5 version of the director's cut of Death Stranding. I've already beat it on four, but yeah. it's there is so much of like like almost like elements of Metal Gear like. Um, a little bit of one more two and more three Mm -hmm. of like just that craziness. Um, And then also you have the, what you would think would be super boring delivering packages, right? Mm -hmm. Just you have literally a baby in a jar strapped to your belly. And that's the only way you can see the evil monsters. This is straight out of his head. Right. And I'm pretty sure that when he dreams, it's pleasant. And when he wakes up, it's nightmares. Like, it's just crazy how his role, (laughs) like how he can create these things. Oh, Mm. but yeah, I'll I'll get that. So we'll play that. The other one we didn't have on our list is, I don't know the person's name, um, but you'd have to look it up. So um, maybe you can look it up while I'm kind of going through it. Is the the creator of um, all things um, Resident Evil and Capcom, just some of the most amazing game, and I'm not like a horror person. Like if I play, like I wouldn't play Silent Hill. I wouldn't play anything, yeah. Um, like worse than that, but uh, yeah, I- incredible. Um, I love Silent Hill. I love the, that game so much, the, man. The one that, uh, and you see that they're doing a remaster of Silent Hill, and Silent Hill's a different, for the most part, creative director, yeah. But Resident Evil. Um, His name's Shinji Makama. Yes, and he's like <laughs> Sorry, Shinji Mikami. I and pronounced the, that wrong. The the remake of sorry, not remake. Thank you. <laughs> Think the Lord is not a remake for the most part. We will see, but Resident Evil Four is mm. probably airing on the ninety five percent remaster, five percent remake, which is yeah. like we talked about before. The games we loved growing up with were perfect. Dear video game industry, please, if you're going to touch it again and open up that code base and make it better or whatever, Mm. please do not touch anything other than a new skin of paint on the graphics. We do not want our memories blemished by your lack of budget timelines or let's just try this gameplay dynamic. It's almost like you haven't seen a friend for 20 years. Yeah. And you finally meet up with them and they're addicted to meth. 
Do you know what I mean? You're like, oh my God, uh, 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 my memory of you was much more pleasant. I, I'm sorry I ran into you in this alley in Toronto. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, no, yes. but you know what? Again, dollars and cents, man, dollars and cents. Whatever's yeah. going to be, you know, it's going to make fiscal sense is what they're going to um, go for, right? Um, they don't care about our our nostalgia. Um, what, what's your favorite Res Evil um, game? So four for sure. And that's what got me into it. And that's why this month, um, I think near the end of the month, the, um, the, the four remaster is coming out and Mm -hmm. that, that, that director that you just mentioned, um, they were talking about how they added in some stuff into it, um, that didn't exist before. And some of the characters that they added was like, just like out of nowhere, like a certain guy with a chainsaw, it's just completely mm-hmm. like a new character that, you know, it's kind of the same levels and all that stuff. And people yeah. thought that they were going to take out a lot of the games like characters and stuff. I believe that for the most part, they're all there. Now it looks fairly complete. Like it's just going to be incredible. Um, nice. the, uh, my favorite, my favorite favorite. I'm not sure if it is him. Um, let me just see. Okay. So from this is the creator, uh, Shin Shinji. Mikami. Yeah. Um, and he was the, um, he made this game mm-hmm. and he started a studio called Tango Gameworks. Yeah. And it, the, this game was published by Bethesda. So, um, you know, had nothing to do with development. Thank, thank the Lord. And so he, he was uh, a director of resident evil and it, this game is called the evil within mm-hmm. and it is just so much like right back to that. Like if you, if, if your last experience with your favorite Resident Evil game was four or five on, you know, GameCube, PS2, 360, or whatever it is, like the HD version. Yeah. Um, if that was your last experience, um, there was, you know, the evil within and the evil within two. And I would say that, you know, something happened in the evil within two that wasn't, it was, it was good. Right. But it yeah. was nothing like the first evil within, and we're talking about like the most craziest bosses, like this guy's boss. Th- there's a boss of a guy that's like a butcher, right? Yeah. And he has a safe for a head, right? Mm-hmm. And when you open the safe, there's nothing inside the safe. That's like my head. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what the your wife would say about your head, really. Um, it's like, you're like, you're like a safe, but when I open it, there's nothing, there's nothing in inside. So why, why should I protect that? You know? So I'm, um, <laughs> And when you kill the boss, mm-hmm. he comes back within, um, I don't know, probably 30 seconds. And the screen like flickers like this whole like strobe effect. Yeah. And it's like you finally find out, you know, a certain point how to take care of that boss, you know, for the good. Right. Um, but it is crazy. The bosses, the. You know, you know, when I played Resident Evil, not the originals for the first time. It was number five and I'm used to playing resident evil where it was a puzzle game. And it was just for me, that's resident evil, not over the shoulder mass effect type, but yeah. puzzle where the camera is kind of at the top and yeah. it's, you know, ominously looking down at you. Yeah. And you feel like you're being watched, <laughs> but you're just watching yourself. It's really a, a meta moment, but you're, you're like walking around doing puzzles, moving statues, having them uh, being, you know, having them sit on, on little I guess little floor panels that do stuff. And it was literally that for me is resident evil. Cause my favorite of all the series is one called code Veronica, which Uh, was probably my first brush with resident evil. Yeah. It was dreamcast. I played the hell out of that system and it had like 60 games, Mm. which is probably their whole library. Be honest, (laughs) but they uh, had a, they had an up res of code Veronica. Oh, did they? Oh goodness. That game is so good, man. That was my first brush with it. Then when, when I hit four, was it four? No, four was, I didn't actually play four. When I played five, it was on PS3. I was completely disappointed. I was disappointed. I didn't want to play it anymore. I oh, went back one? in <laughs> Resident Evil 5. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. That uh, a little to me, bit that's weird. not Resident Evil. Yeah. It was just It was just too insane for so me. It, I, I, I like that slow paced yeah. puzzle and a uh, little more spooky, yeah. atmospheric. Did you Resident skip? Uh, did you skip four? And you went to five? I skipped four. Oh, for and sure. I, even, like, I think I, I even skipped three. Yeah. I played one and two and then Code Veronica. 
Yeah. Actually, one and then Code Veronica. I think two came out after. I'm not sure the the timeline with those, but yeah, man, four, uh, five just just destroyed my faith in in that series. Yeah, like I might I I might have a different opinion on that if I didn't have four first. Mm-hmm. Almost like four prepared me for five, and five was like, I okay, I, I've seen this before. I know what I'm getting into. But going right to five, and then you're just like smack dab in Africa, you're just a white dude and you're shooting people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, That's that, exactly. game, that game today would probably be canceled. Do you know what yeah. I mean? There's no way that that would have been okay. Yes, the, those people were infected and, and they're zombies or whatever of that, you know, some of them, mm-hmm. right? But think about like how that game came out and like if that came out today, it's like yeah. ridiculous, right? Well, um, well, you know what? In all fairness, man, you got to kill those zombies, right? But fair that, enough, that yeah. first thing, that as soon as it started, man, that over over the shoulder and that tumbling and that jumping through wind is like, what? Yeah. yeah. What did they do? What did they do to this franchise? Yeah, they made I was, like, uh, uh, I was yeah. severely disappointed. But yeah, like, I'm looking at four here. Four looks like it's like it uh, started. That's where it started, man. Do you have? If you haven't played four, when you come over, um, we'll do. Uh, I have the. Uh, 4K remastered version of 4 for yeah. Xbox Series X, which I think originally came out on 360, so it probably runs better. Um, hopefully, <laughs> emulation for the win. Um, but you, <laughs> dude, you'll love it. It's like, you know, I think you're in some kind of like Ukraine or Russian kind of like, you know, no one's speaking English. And like, you know, you think these all villagers are normal until their heads pop off and there's like these squids and the, the squids like, you know, try nice. to attack you. And then like, <laughs> It's very like uh, religious too, almost because like they're all like, and then a bell just rings and they all go to church. Like they were attacking you. They're like, Hey, where's, and then the trailer was where Leon Kennedy is like, Hey, where's everybody going? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's like literally just getting like axes thrown at them. And like, sorry, it's Sunday at 10. We gotta, we gotta go. We have our, we have our priorities (laughs) right now. Um, But yeah. Pretty cool. But uh, what about Raccoon City? Ever try that one? No, is that was that PS One Raccoon City? Honestly, I don't know. Let, let's see. I, that's another one that was on my list to play, but I feel like that's more of like a um, FPS, like a straight out FPS, man. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, have you ever like if you like one, good, man. one and 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 uh, two and Veronica? Did you ever play Resident Evil? I think it's zero. Um, you know what? I came in a bundle on my ps4 when i bought yeah. like the old ones so i bought yeah. like all the re- remasters of the old ones it yeah. came with that bundle but i have not played it yet it's really fun um mm. my buddy and i jay we we uh because it's two player yeah but it's two player it's not two player in the conventional sense it you have to control two characters independently meaning yeah. you can press like the select button or whatever the button is and then you're playing as her then you can press the select button and so you have to move these two characters right so what Jay and I decided to do, we would marathon it over like a 24 to 40 hour period. I think it was 24 because I think the game was like six, you know, 16, oh, sorry, eight to 12 hours. Yeah. And every time we'd press select, like I'd get the girl, of course, for various reasons. And then he, he would play the dude. And then we would just, every time we have to hand the controller off, we would just mm. press select and, and hand it off. And we, we marathoned it like that. That would have been a pretty cool, uh, innovative gameplay uh, live streaming experience if yeah. you know those things existed back then. Hey, didn't we, we play a game it. like that? We played um, um that oh, man, what was that game? That anthology game. What was it called? But it's pretty pretty spooky too. It was um Oh, you're talking about the Man in Medan yes, and all those of those. Games, yeah. And I have a new one. T- well, no, we beat that new one, but then there's another one out that and those are like the choose your own adventure. Remember like remember like out of nowhere things would just pop and we go back and we're like, Oh, nothing's there. And yeah. then we'd look at each other like, no, there was something there. exactly yeah. like this. They can't do that. Right. Um, you know, you I know, not- speaking of, of games that used to freak me out. I don't know if you ever play this game. It's called fatal frame. Yeah, that Dude, was, that was terrifying. I had, right. I had nightmares yeah. after, cause I, I really played yeah. that for hours and hours. And I literally went to sleep and dreamt about that. It was crazy scary. The worst is like, you get out the camera and then like they're right in your face. Yeah. Like you, you don't do have nothing. that thing where like they're over here, like yeah. very far away. And then boom, they're in your face. You're and then, like, oh. and then they're screaming. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then wow. you got to like, uh, they're like, Oh, I got to take your picture one second, please. And then the only way you kill them is by taking a photo of them. That's right. 
That's right. That's like the Kardashians. Remember. That's exactly <laughs> the same story. I bet you, like, it was ahead of its time. You just have oh, to take sure, a photo man. of them, and they instantly perish. <laughs> um, um, Tim Schaefer, another awesome one. Um, mm. I didn't play, like, Grim or Tentacle, um, but I did play, um, what was that? Oh, Psychonauts. Oh, that was okay. crazy. Have you played that? Uh, no, I have not. Just so I've good. That was on it. Xbox, and there was another one, but it was just that's kind of crazy. That and that reminds me of like I don't know, almost um like just a series of uh, car- there was like a PC game back in the day called um, uh, I think it's called Brain Dead Thirteen, mm-hmm. and then it was it kind of so like familiar. your it's like a cartoon, almost like you remember that. Um, left and right like you have to time these like left and rights or you yeah. die and it was a dragon's layer man. A dragon's layer so it was the same people that made i believe dragon's layer but it was called brain dead 13 i remember this i do and remember I, this i rented it from uh uh blockbuster you could rent pc games right yeah and then you'd get them home and put them in and your computer would say you do not have the right drivers for this video card <laughs> and then you're like okay well then let me just return the game or whatever and uh back in the day man like uh good times man good times I at least on so. ms dos nice yeah i remember ms dos like i wrote like that was my first tout at or or kick of the can at uh programming i wrote like mm. batch menu based batch files to like launch games with cheat with or without cheat codes and yeah i nice. think i might still have the code which obviously won't Run, but that was the whole like remember the where's like w a oh yeah i remember that z and like games you just have to add a z on the with end, a z at the end. <laughs> you're stealing it right that's how you know like oh are we getting groceries with a z we're, we're robbing no frills you know what i mean like um it, that was back in the day and they would get burnt to cdrs and the cdrs were like gold yeah right oh, yeah. and then some were red and you're like what's this red one and like you're mm. like discovering these different colors of cdrs and you're like wow what's this one for hey, do you remember do you remember cd copy world you get like you download the cd or you get yeah. like the, the cd and you just rip it to your computer and you get go to cd copy world and get the exe the fixed executable and that came with trainers where you can do cheats for the game it was oh my god a lot of cool stuff man do you remember time commando no 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 that was like a pc game that was like uh, a 3d character I think moving in this, like almost like how Resident Evil one was these fixed pictures and the 3d characters moving through these fixed pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, but that one was instead of the pictures, it was moving through videos. Yeah. So you can imagine Resident Evil. If instead of being the pictures, it would be like, things are moving as you're walking Mm -hmm. as a video. It's kind of like pretty innovative from a development side if you're resource constraint on like 3d graph graphics processing power, and you need to make something that looks pretty trendy and new, like you, yeah. you had to go through some really creative hoops to be able to make some Hollywood level or attempt any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so going back to Tim, Tim Schaefer, he made, yeah. um, Grim Fandango. I don't know if you ever played that. I, I played a little bit and it's not my kind of game. It has a, a good rating. A lot of people love it. I just, yeah. I couldn't get into it. The, the cartoon style is not for me, yeah. but that being said, I love point and click adventures. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah, I've been playing one yeah. recently. It's called The Unavowed. Uh, is really that, cool? Is that the one from uh, the, the the Miyazaki ones? Uh, no, I don't know who the makes Ghibli. The Unavowed. It's some um, some studio in like Sweden or Finland or somewhere Scandinavian country. What's it called? The Un- Unavowed. Unavowed. And they have a series of point and click games. Yeah, but I'm playing that one specifically. It's really fun. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, just taking a look now. Um, what's your uh, what's your brush with the point and click? What's your top? Yeah. So I grew up playing King's Quest. It was probably yeah. my first like experience. I think it was King's Quest Six. Mm-hmm. Hold on. And then the next one I got was a cartoony one, which I think was Seven. Yeah. And, um, I remember like friends and I were even playing like where well, they were playing it, but I was watching them. They were playing King's Quest five. Mm-hmm. And the other ones I love playing were, you know, fate of Atlantis, Indiana. Yeah. And these are all the Lucas arts games. And there was a lot of incredible Lucas arts games. Of course, we have to mention the secret of monkey Island. You can't yes. talk about point and click without mentioning that. Yeah. And, and 
and the uh, the second one, the sequel that that like Secret of Monkey Island, like I played that so much. I just remember yeah. how their mouths would talk and it would be like all over the place where like because they have to make the pixels seem like they're like their mouths were like disproportionate. The mouth animation was disproportional to it their was, head, right? It was, it was yeah. just so charming. It was perfect. Yes. It made you want a cup of grog. Oh yeah, man. I want to be a pirate. Everybody did yeah. after playing that game. <laughs> yeah. And then we had to wait a couple of years till we got um, pirates of the Caribbean to want to be pirates again. Right. You know, um, yeah. until that, until this day, I still paint my toenails black. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. I, I've think, been thinking about that though. You know, like, I mean, why can't guys do that stuff? Let's do it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like that. And <laughs> what else was point and clicky? Uh, yeah, um, so that game, there were um, point to click. That was like one that really stood out. But there were a lot of really good ones. Um, King's Quest, of course, as you brought. Leisure Suit Larry was pretty pretty dirty, but uh, yeah. not for kids. Not uh, for yeah. kids because it was, uh, yeah. And then, so, uh, you know, the director of or the game changing director of king's quest and all that stuff was i think sierra williams or i'm not sure if it sierra name, but it was made by sierra yeah. and uh but i think her name is there's something to do with williams. oh i see um but yeah she was she was incredible for what she created i think the one after seven was eight and it was all 3d i didn't play it i always wanted to but mm-hmm. they did come out with a king's quest like fully revamped new one that you could download on xbox and it i was played like, that one yeah it's yeah, not it was, the same it's not the same it was okay they did a yeah, good job it with okay. it but then you know after hour number five i i drop it like you know again this is i mean it was a really good i was really compelled on it but you know it's so difficult like think about if their budgets aside um mm-hmm. even if you have the same people like even the director like you were at a different state both like technically maturity wise at that point of your life and, you know, maybe asking the, well, I shouldn't, you know, put it in that way, but maybe asking people to recreate like what we love from our childhood in a different mm. way is, is too difficult. It's a very difficult ask, but at the right. same time they could just, that's why remasters are best bang for your buck. Literally you have the game, you know yeah. what to do. Don't mess it up. Just like, and I'm not talking about a new skin of paint. I'm talking about like, you know, like make actual sprites instead of like, yeah, gobbledygook pixel characters, right? The but, thing is, the money, right? Like, it's going to target a niche, you know, crowd, and yeah. they want to target a broader audience. Yeah, like how many people want to play King's Quest uh, remastered? Sure. I don't know. I mean, I uh, do. But. Yeah, for sure. You know what they've <laughs> they, they've done for that is for that same question is they get a GoFundMe going. Yeah. And once they reach some of them, like games have started based on go GoFundMe's and, and they reach like, like a million bucks mm-hmm. and they're like, okay, we got a million. We can That's like, a good idea. develop this game. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, if anyone wants a, a game developed, you know, if you know, get enough people together and go on GoFundMe and just put it up there. And, you know, if you got a really good idea, like, I'm telling you, it has happened and they do make this stuff yeah. and it's incredible. What do you think of Telltale games? Now, here's the thing, right? When you look at point and click adventures, yeah. Telltale games are lumped in with them. Yeah. But are they actually point and click? They are kind Is of it, like a choose your own adventure book. Right? Yeah, but are they point and click? I don't think so. No. I think you're not pointing and clicking. Well, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know the semantics, sure. but... <laughs> Yeah, you're you're maybe pointing and clicking, but it's not the same as that genre, right? Yeah. But um, I I think I despise Telltale games. I can't I, think I, I can't do, play I, them. I think I do too, and uh, it's pretty bold of you to say that because I I feel like a lot of people are feeling that same way, mm. and they maybe lack the confidence that you do to just come right out and say, you know what, I I know that <laughs> I know that they're beautiful, they're doing some good stuff. But they are but beautiful. I, I, I absolutely loathe them too. Like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot of technical stuff that goes into them and all that, but oh, of course, I just, I don't know. I just feel like it's shovelware at this point. It's probably yeah. very easy to, not very easy to create. I mean, relatively easy to create compared to other triple A titles. They seem to come out with them very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, that could just be an efficiency thing, but it could also be obviously because it's easier to create options and branching animations yeah. than actual gameplay. Um, 
there is some of that choose your own adventure stuff that was pretty good. I forget the name of it. There, there is PS2 some that, one. that was really good. Um, there is, some of them were really good. And uh, off the top of my head, I can tell you, um, maybe not off the top of my head. I may have to think right. about it. But I can't remember. It was like, like a, a really PS2 choose your own adventure. It was like the psychedelic one. Choose your um, own adventure. I'm trying to think. I, I did enjoy. Oh, man, no. What was that? What was that game on PS3 where you're an investigator? This was a Telltale game where you're like an investigator, and it starts off where you have like um, man, I can't remember. Yeah, an inhaler. The you have I'm an inhaler. Of. You have to like shake your controller, and then the guy like oh, takes um, a puff he- of it. I think one of them oh, was heavy, heavy, heavy rain. rain, heavy rain. Yeah, right. that one. That this is what I'm trying to get to of like. Yeah, so you're already kind of ahead, and even becoming a Detroit becoming human is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, before oh, man, I couldn't play that for like more yeah, than an hour, fair enough. So, Heavy Rain, number two on this list of like most influential point and click, but the mm-hmm. one before it, um, was really, really good too. But I feel like what ha- happened, like without knowing if there's any way to trace it at all, oh, yeah, it was Indigo Prophecy. Oh, okay. So okay. it was first PS2 Indigo Prophecy. Then I then I played Heavy Rain. I think that's the order. Um, and then basically Telltale's like, oh, I like this recipe. Let's just create a bunch of you know, <laughs> yeah. the Wolf Among Us, all this stuff, and like to each their own. But I really feel right. like, and you know, historically people sometimes come out with an incredible idea, right? Of course. And then the shovelware comes, right? That's and this the thing, is the right? Assassin's Creed effect. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly it. Yeah. Or, or as I call it, it's like the uh, disease of sequelitis. <laughs> or like, oh, they caught, the, the company caught it. And now they, you know, if you get bad enough sequelitis, you, it converts to sh- shovelware-itis. Yep. And you just basically, it's all downhill. Um, when we didn't talk about Sid Meier, he's another influential uh, a dude, makes civilization, um, all the, yes. you know, tycoons and like sim like they make sim city and stuff like that did he um, um no that was well right and the sims yeah. um and you know he they were both very influential especially in the you know pc game series yes. like they, it did come over to console you know i don't think we know like off the top of our head unless you do the main people responsible for you know starcraft and warcraft and all that Blizzard? Stuff. i don't or, or, the, or the guys, yeah, the guy. The I guy. don't know their names off the top of my head. Okay, but, yeah. uh, but there Mike is Morheim is okay. There I think go. that's his name. I'm not sure, but he's a World of Warcraft a developer, yeah. director, whatever. Yeah, man. How you like my like, Warcraft? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was like uh, I watched a retrospective of the fall and decline of well, not the decline. It was like the rise of Leroy Jenkins. Oh, nice of and like where he's at like he'll just you know turn up for events he he says his you know two words they hand him a check and he's like i'm out i'm at the <laughs> casino he's got the babes around him he's throwing craps you know like i love like, that yeah. dude honestly I love that game and it lost its charm and magic but yeah still one of my top right yeah so all right uh rui so what what are you looking forward to of these like top super crazy in a good way, the best way possible game directors, game changing directors of these directors or directors not man uh, mentioned in our podcast today. What is the, I don't know, one or two games you're most looking forward to coming out in the next couple of years. Um, I I don't keep up to date with what's coming out, but I'm looking forward to more Miyamoto characters, more super Mario brother games, and Yoshi games, Donkey Kong games, because, you know, I have a small child and he loves to play Super Mario. So that to me now is, you know, takes precedence. Yeah, for sure. Looking forward to more fun Mario games and movies and all that good stuff. How about you? Um, on my side, like I said, the Resident Evil 4 remake this month. Um, another one I'm looking forward to is... Um, um, of not listed in here. I don't think we talked about... I think his name is Aranoma or Ar- Ar- <laughs> anyhow, the guy that made Zelda, you know, yeah. um, you know, the new um, it was called the breath of the wild two for switch. 
but they it became its own title, which is I don't know. It's coming out in a couple months, I believe. The new Switch Zelda, which is yeah, a lot of buzz ahead. about that game, right? Yeah, it's it is called the Tears of the Kingdom, mm-hmm. and I, I'm a little worried about it, given that it's set in the same engine. You know, because yeah. it could it, right as up to this date, it has the risk and potential to flop of a sequelitis level thing, right? But looking back at all of the Zeldas, did any of those, did any of the Zeldas, like it could be the first of all time that, mm-hmm. like, I, I, th- I don't there think are it's going to happen. Majora's Mask was a bit of a. I don't know. Some and people loved it, man. That's the thing is, you know what? Majora's Mask was the only one. Mm-hmm. Well, not only one, but the thing about that one was Zelda games historically up until that point took like three, four, five, six years or whatever, right? Yeah. They took a long time. So I think someone from corporate or whatever said, you have like two years, you got to get it out. And it was right. basically the shortest development cycle window. And that's what they were able to create. But you're right. There is a speed running cult culture. There is a whole culture around Majora's Mask and there's lore and like uh, lies and fables and these like conspiracies on oh this person was really this person it's messed up like you can get really geeky um, Mm -hmm. in in a non-attractive way with the Majora's Mask (laughs) you know like don't make it your opening line at the bar right uh, well we don't have to worry we're not picking up any any bar ladies exactly anytime uh, anytime soon so our viewers might be but uh, we are definitely um, <laughs> on a leash tied about. to our computer desk. And <laughs> exactly. Our wives let us leave uh, with a code that we don't have access to if we're good boys. Absolutely, man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, uh, behind every good good uh, man is an even better woman, or yep. behind every good person is an even better spouse, best friend, partner, whatever it is. But uh, Rudy and I are definitely part of that. Um, lucky to be alive. Lucky to have her. Um, yep. state of mind in all honesty um but yeah that's it from uh, my side Rui. um anything you want to say before we head on out like a baby and <laughs> no man i think we've covered uh, quite a bit of stuff in this episode yeah i'm, I'm pretty much uh tapped out for things to say all right so coffee thanks, finished. yeah coffee is finished Oh, no, I have another ship, which I'll play during the outro music. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you next time on the Codeplay Culture Podcast.